him he loves, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. On set nux in the world angebring die, ons kan ook niks daaruit wegneem nie. Die Heere het gekeer en die Heere het geneem. Prijs die naam van die Heere. next to you and say God loves you. Not more than that. God loves you. God loves you, Mr. Michael. Yes. The Lord be with you. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Desmond in Pillow Tutu. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our ethnic pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us, we mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until by your love we are united to those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Most merciful Lord, 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 whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. Dear precious sweet, if there's no family, nobody is all near the time. Trevor the Son. And his daughters, Tandega, Rukumbi, and Bo, and all their relatives, his extended family, his friends, the church itself, and all of us who mourn his loss. Together, grant that there may be not a woman who may be sudden, sad, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And so, beloved, in that spirit of you are beautiful and God loves you, I welcome you from 
Malaya and the family, our president, chief, and representative of all the people of our land, our Archbishop and presider, Tabo, and our guest preacher, who came all the way from Durban the day before, uh, Bishop Michael Nuttall. And so as we gather in this moment, I just want to be mindful that we have brevity of time, and yet we still want to do this time of fun, farewell, and joyful celebration in a way that while it is trying to be expeditious, that we also give quality of time as we are present here. And so I ask that every person who has a part in the liturgy, there where your name is mentioned, anticipated, and to do come forward. And uh, nobody will be calling you. You are familiar with where your name is in the liturgical script. And so I ask that you be mindful of that. We're also very cognizant of the many, many multitudes who would have loved to have been here on this occasion. And so in their absence, we acknowledge them, be they in the lallies of our land, the people out there in Bazana, people in Constantia, in Aiduchwa, in Tolo, and all other places where we are gathered. We pray that they in Beijing, in Havana, in Brixton, and in Palestine, and wherever you are listening and viewing, we pray that you will gain sustenance from this moment. So in conclusion, I just want to remind us of Ms. Billy Holiday. She could have been referencing Father Desmond and Pilo when she sang that song, Crazy, He Calls Me. And she said, like the wind that shakes the bow, he moves me with a smile. It's that tutu smile from the heart of God that one love heart that calmed and focused those who saw it in person or saw it in the media, in photographs, in television. And we recognize that smile reminded us and emphasized in life that, and I quote again, the gorgeous Billy Holiday, the difficult I'll do right now. But beloved, the impossible will take a little while. And so, as Archbishop Tavo has reminded us and reframed from our recent history, our beloved to live life to the full, that we are beautiful. Because a child of God, Desmond Epilo, assured us by his ways and words that God loves us. And so God be praised.
Dumela. I am standing here representing those who called the one we come to lay to rest, Daddy, Kulu, Malume, Good Boy, and the one whom he affectionately called Ho Ho. I am standing to convey our family's thanks for the many ways in which all of you have stepped forward to tell us of how much you loved Daddy. I want to first apologize for all of us as a family because we have received so many messages on all kinds of media and we haven't been able to respond to all the prayers and good wishes that we have received. So if you sent us a message and you haven't heard from the person you sent it to, it is not because we are ignoring or are ungrateful for the message. We have just received so many and we have just been overwhelmed. Who Daddy would say, the love the world has shown has warmed the cockles of our hearts. And he then would say, I don't know what a cockle is, but whatever it is, it has been warmed. And since he was an English teacher, and if he didn't know what a cockle is, I definitely don't know what a cockle is. But our cockles are warm. We thank you for loving our father, grandfather, husband, uncle, brother, brother-in-law. Many of the messages we received have said, thank you for sharing him with the world. Well, it actually is a two-way street. Because we shared him with the world, you shared part of the love you held for him with us. And so we are thankful. And we are thankful that all of you have gathered in your many places, in person or via the wonders of technology, to be a part of celebrating Daddy's life throughout this week. And lastly, to him who has gathered us here, Udedi, Udada, we say thank you, Daddy, for the many ways you showed us love, for the many times you challenged us, for the many times you comforted us. La la chez. Saliwa Jalamba Mkonto Bumf Lala Mutor. Thank you. and those of all Anglicans around the world to Mama Lea, to Trevor, to Tandeka, Montombe, and Abul. Those who will miss it most and those who are closest to the arch. And then I want to say that for myself or any Archbishop of Canterbury to give a tribute to the Archbishop, is like a mouse giving a tribute to an elephant. For Archbishop Desmond Tutu lit up the world. South Africa has given us so much in the last 30 years, so much in this extraordinary example of the Rainbow Nation. 
and two giant figures that tower over the world, President Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We are so grateful. In all the messages I've received from around the world, the numerous WhatsApps, the most striking common theme has been where people have said, when we were in the dark, he bought light. And that light has lit up countries globally that were struggling with fear, conflict, persecution, oppression, where the marginalized suffered. He never ceased to speak prophetically. He never ceased to speak powerfully. He never ceased to shed light. Many Nobel Prize winners' light fades with time. His grew brighter. And his light was the light of Christ. And that is why his light will go on shining, because it is the light of Christ. The Christ who sent him whom he served, who gave him courage, and who means that his light is not extinguished. The arch is not someone who one will speak of as was, but who is shedding light for those on the edge and who suffer to this day and in the future. May God rest his soul and bless his family and may God bless South Africa. President and all distinguished guests, you are most welcome. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Righteous live forevermore. Their reward is with the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we pray the calling to purity, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you for our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, to give us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Let us say the collect together. God our Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, died and rose again for our salvation. We entrust to you the soul of your servant, Desmond, praying that he and all the faithful departed may be revealed as your children when Christ shall come again, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Hear the word of the Lord. Appointed for today is Psalm 116, verses 9 through 17. Read responsively, the congregation will respond with bold. Precious in the sight of the Lord. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled, and I said in my alarm, Everyone is a liar. Lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving call upon the name of the Lord. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, Alleluia. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning. beginning is now and will be forever. Amen.
Thank you. I'm uh, honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent, a, sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments 
and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
Many times you wipe away the tears of your husband, for, as we all know, he cried very easily. And in the life of our country, both past and present, he had much to cry about, not to mention the wider world, which seems in many ways to be tearing itself apart. Today, we are here to cry, to try, in a small way, to wipe away your tears. Though tears are, of course, a very necessary part of our grieving. Allow me to give you and your family a comment which was sent to me for my comfort, in which I found helpful in the strange twists and turns of my own grieving. Grief is not a disorder, a disease, or a sign of weakness. It is an emotional, physical, and spiritual necessity, the price you pay for love. The only cure for grief is to grieve. Desmond and I became close in an unlikely partnership at a truly critical time in the life of our country from 1989 to 1996. He as Archbishop of Cape Town and I as his deputy when as Bishop of Natal I was elected by my brother bishops to be also what is called Dean of the Province. I was asked during a pastoral visit that we made together to Jerusalem what this cumbersome ecclesiastical title meant. My answer on the spur of the moment was that it meant number two to two two. <laughs> the nickname stuck. But more importantly, at a deeper level, our partnership struck a chord, perhaps in the hearts and minds of many people. A dynamic black leader, and his white deputy in the dying years of apartheid, and hey presto, the heavens did not collapse. <laughs> we were a foretaste, if you like, of what could be in our wayward, divided nation. What does the Lord require of you but to pursue justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Allow me to briefly to unpack each of these qualities in relation to our esteemed Archbishop. First, pursue justice. Desmond was not on some crusade of personal aggrandizement or egotism, though he often and disarmingly admitted that he loved to be loved. What is wrong with that? Do we not all love to be loved? It is a human craving from the moment we are born. But no, Desmond's response to grave injustice came from the depths of his being, and often in response to what he called the divine nudge. Listen to what his favorite prophet, Jeremiah, wrote. There is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. That is how Desmond Tutu lived and ministered in a situation of systemic and often brutal injustice in his own beloved country. Nor did the fire in his breast die out in his years of retirement and old age, though he was thrilled with the coming of democracy in 1994. Watch out, watch out, watch out, he warned sternly when the new government stalled expediently in giving a visa to his friend and fellow peace laureate, laureate the Dalai Lama at the time of the Archer's 80th birthday. He was not similarly turned down 
when he went to Dharamsala in India for the Dalai Lama's 80th birthday. And together, they produced a remarkable book called The Book of Joy, which is a spiritual classic for our time, and indeed for all time. A book crafted by a deep and humorous conversation between a Buddhist and a Christian, and compiled beautifully by Douglas Abrams, who is a Jew. There is a profound pursuit of a just order in this fine product, namely a religious just order, amidst so much shameful intolerance in today's world. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Secondly, love kindness. Love kindness. This was our arch at his very best. His was not a harsh ideological quest for justice. Always it was grounded in mercy, in chesed, to use the Hebrew word, in an enduring loving kindness, the touch, the forgiving heart, the warm smile. Ah, yes, the warm smile. Remember his fine book on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that seminal body which he chaired. It was titled, No Future Without Forgiveness. How could someone who had suffered so much hostility and disdain in his own country settle for such a conviction, such magnanimity? It was because all that he stood for and strove for was undergirded by a spirit of mercy towards everyone. Did you ever receive from him a phone call or a gift of flowers, a card, a handwritten letter or an email? When my wife for 57 years died, on All Souls Day in 2016, he was on the phone to me, despite great physical frailty, to comfort me and to offer, as he would say, a little prayer from the heart. Desmond was quite at ease praying on the telephone with others. Actually, he prayed anywhere and everywhere, not only in churches and chapels. He also so wanted to be at Dory's funeral, Dory being my wife, and was truly pained that ill health prevented him. The flowers, of course, arrived. The flowers arrived. It's a painful and beautiful memory for me. Thirdly, walk humbly with your God. Here is the mystery of the interior pilgrimage of the soul. There were three Ps about our Archbishop. He was the prophet, the pastor, and the prayer. What many perhaps did not realize was that the prayer undergirded, guided, and prompted all the rest. A daily Eucharist was his custom, regardless of the circumstances. I remember having, him, having one with him in Frankfurt Airport when we were waiting for a connecting flight. It is utterly appropriate that his funeral service today is immersed in what we call a Requiem Eucharist. And it would be his wish that all of us be free to receive the sacred body and blood of Christ at this Eucharist in memory of him. 
Desmond was not only immersed in the liturgical prayer of the church, he was also up at four every morning to pray, to meditate, to contemplate, and to intercede. In his intercessory work, he would engage in what Yulia called a cook's tour around the whole world. In his prayer, the world was his parish, and surely that was appropriate for a holder of the Nobel Peace Prize. So I give you, in memory of this holy and very human man, this humane person, this humane leader, a threefold cord which we too can try to emulate. Pursue justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. I conclude this intertwined sermon and eulogy with the words of a personal praise song looking back on our archer's remarkable life and held in awe by his going from us now. Yo, Desmond and Pilo Tutu, born and raised where the gentle Botswana live, land of the Kamilduring tree and the wide, wide Flakta. His mother, a domestic worker, his father a teacher, polio survivor, TB survivor, visited unforgettably in hospital by one Trevor Huddleston, CR. Bright child, living in the shadow of the great injustice. Raised through sickness to a priestly calling, Finding the fire in your breast that prevented silence. Articulate scholar, prophet, pastor, prayer, preacher of passion with arms stretched out. Diminutive person making presidents tremble. Small person of the past, becoming great in the unfolding purposes of God. Learning the art in mountain kingdom, being greeted visiting parishes in Basutu blanket, astride a hardy horse, learning the harder way in the city of gold, the bitter irony of red carpets abroad and icy stairs back home learning to lead on, lean on God and the safety valve of an irrepressible, self-deprecating humor. Voice of the muted multitude, son of the dark, mysterious land, called at the height of crisis to the Cape of Storms to transform it into the Cape of Good Hope. Mbisho pi Take rest at last. Lala Gashle, our dear friend, the Arch. You have tended the wounds of noble strife, the wounds of Ubuntu. Enter now into the full embrace of the great and generous God you served. Okay. 
is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for the prayers. for holy service in your church, proclaiming the message with persistent faith, whether the time was favorable or unfavorable, convincing, rebuking, and encouraging with the utmost patience in teaching. Speak to him the words of welcome and commendation. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. Pour out the abundance of your blessings on the church, which he served with diligence and devotion, and use us to carry on the good work you achieved in him, that what he received and passed on to us, we may faithfully hand on to those who come after us. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Desmond, who was reborn by water and the Spirit into your holy death and glorious resurrection. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Please, uh, 
friends of the king. We love because Christ first loved us. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the fruit of our labor, offered in love, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer up which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. But blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands, for us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have delivered us from the slavery of sin when he gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven and through him sent your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. And no doubt once 
zie, want hij het wat zij opstandig doorzelf en die dood oorden. En verdriet en verloop verbaan. Door zij oorwinning het hij onze eeuwige leven gegeven en ons van die geboordheid aan zonde en vrees dat die dood verloopt. Tot die heerlijk vrijheid van de kinderen van God. Therefore, the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever. Say. Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, and through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread, so that it may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So to after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we all people celebrate before you this one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. He is rising from the dead and he is ascending into the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him unworthy though we are so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Savior in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. In the language of our choice, as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. And so Father. Le 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Kom nader en ontvang die lichaam van onze Heer Jezus Christus, wat hij voor u gegeven heeft, en zijn bloed, wat hij voor u gestort heeft. Nettig Christus en u harte, ter geloof met dankzegging.
thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. Together, gracious God, we thank you that it is holy sacrament. You have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that it may be to us a comfort in our sorrow and a pledge of our inheritance. In that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Amen. We shall listen to the anthem, Jesus, Joy of Man's Desiring. to your servant with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. The immortal formed of the earth, and earth shall be returned as you ordained. When you created our saying, dust you are, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Hallelujah. <coughs> 
give rest of Christ your servant with your saints. your hands, O most merciful Saviour, we commend your servant Mbilo Desmond Tutu, acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now sing the national anthem.
it is an honor and the privilege bestowed upon me by my religious leaders that I invite the Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency the President of the Republic, to come and deliver the eulogy. Mr. President, shall we all rise, please? I thank you. Let us be seated. Bishop Tabo Nkoba, in your capacity as program director, Mama Lea Tutu, members of the Tutu family, His Majesty King Litsia III, her Royal Highness Princess Mabel van Oranje, former President Thabo Mbeki and Sis Zanel Mbeki, former President Khalema Motante and Sisi Gugu Motante, former Deputy President and my brother, Bulelani Nuka, former president of Ireland, my dear sister, Mary Robinson, Mama Grasha Marcel, ministers, acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Winde, Executive Mayor of the City of Cape Town, Mr. Hill Lewis, Reverend Michael Guida, Dean of Cape Town, Leadership of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, Retired Bishop Michael Newtel, leaders of the faith of all denominations that are here present, leaders and representatives of political parties, General Ruzani Mapanya, Chief of the South African National Defense Force, veterans of the liberation organizations, and fellow mourners. Archbishop Makhoba, soon after the passing of our father, I went to visit Mamali Yadudu and the family. And after that visit, some journalists were standing outside and they asked me, will the Archbishop be given a category one funeral? I said, of course, it will be a category one funeral. But then I added, with religious characteristics. And may I say that today, you may well have written another chapter in government orders and processes of what a 
a Category 1 funeral with religious characteristics is. And thank you very much. I've just seen it for myself. If Archbishop Desmond Tutu were here, he would have said, hey, hey, why are you looking so glum, so unhappy? He would have wanted to elicit a smile, a laughter from amongst all of us. That was the type of person that he was. I'm really delighted that government has been led in this whole process by the church. We had, after the passing of Madiba, envisaged that this moment would come. And for well, for well over six years, a file in government has been building up and we've been discussing how are we going to send Archbishop Tutu on to the next world. And we took a view that we would be led by the church. And I'm rather pleased that government has taken a back seat this time round. It is only a few amongst us, the rarest of souls, who attain the stature of global icon during their lifetime. In our modern age, this term has come to be associated with celebrity and social media fame. Yet if we are to understand a global icon to be someone of great moral stature, of exceptional qualities, and of service to humanity, there can be no doubt that it refers to the man we are laying to rest today. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was without question a crusader in the struggle for freedom, for justice, for equality, and for peace, not only in South Africa, the country of his birth, but around the world as well. Such was the overarching impact and influence that Emeritus Archbishop Desmond Tutu had that tributes have been received as we had from current, past presidents, religious leaders, monarchs, lawmakers, political parties, musicians, artists, and ordinary people from all corners of the world. Climate activists, LGBTQI plus groups, solidarity movements, and community organizations are just some of those who have paid homage to a man who gave his life to the cause of freedom. A humble and brave human being who spoke for the oppressed, the downtrodden, and the suffering of the world. In doing so, he walked in the footsteps of his mentor, Father Trevor Huddleston, one of the many heroic champions of freedom in our country and on our continent. How fitting is it that his parents named him Mpilo when he was born, meaning life. In his life, he enriched the lives of all those that he met and all those who got to know him. Over the past week, we have had many moving accounts and we've also seen many images of Desmond Tutu's life. These accounts and images in many ways are a chronicle of a life of activism, statesmanship, ministry, and pastoralism. 
There is one image taken in 1989 at the protest march here in Cape Town. In the black and white photograph, we see Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the late Professor Jake Scherville alongside him, glaring defiantly at a cordon of police who were armed to the teeth just inches away. Their mission, that is the police, was to stop the march from proceeding. It is a striking photograph that captures the steely determination of the arch to challenge the authority of an unjust, illegitimate, and repressive regime. It was a vivid depiction of the confrontation between right, represented by those who were marching for democracy, and might represented by the men in the uniform of the apartheid police. That photograph brings to mind the words he spoke following his arrest in 1988 during a clergy-led protest against the crackdown on anti-apartheid groups. Bible in hand, he told a news conference he would continue with his defiance. We are not defying the law, he declared. We are obeying God. There is the famous image taken in 1996 during the hearings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of our arch. His head bent over folded arms, his shoulders weighed down by the deep tragedy and the unspeakable cruelty that was being told of the apartheid crime. The TRC had just heard heart-rending testimony from a veteran activist, Malchas, on how he was tortured by the security police so brutally that he was now confined as he testified at the TRC in a wheelchair. Overcome with emotion at what he had heard, Archbishop Desmond Tutu dropped his head in his hands and wept. That is a photograph that has gone around the world for all to see. Together, these photographs speak not only of the strength of his convictions, but to how deeply he felt the anguish and the suffering inflicted by others who were perpetrators of injustice and intolerance. There are the many images we have of him speaking to crowds, his arms stretched out as though embracing them, or looking serenely up to the heavens. He was a man with a faith as deep as it was abiding. For him, opposing injustice, standing up for the oppressed, defying unjust laws, was God's work. Destiny had anointed him a champion of the immortal cause of justice. He took to heart and lived the words of the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 8 to 9, which says, speak out for those who cannot speak for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. He was not content to decry apartheid at conferences or benefit concerts or international forums. He was there with the freedom fighters confronting the apartheid regime 
and confronting, comforting its victims. He was not content to preach about social justice from the pulpit. He was with the homeless, the helpless, the persecuted, the sick and the destitute, in the streets, in the shelters, and in homes. He embraced all who had ever felt the cold wind of exclusion, and they, in turn, also embraced him. He sought to emulate Jesus Christ, who embraced all those whose society looked down upon and rejected. Throughout his life, he became involved in causes both here at home and abroad that went to the very heart of the quest for social justice. Through the Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation, he was involved in the treatment and care of people living with HIV and AIDS, in the provision of health care services to adolescents, and the empowerment of young women. He was an outspoken supporter of the Palestinian cause, and in 2014, he wrote a powerful article calling on the Israelis and Palestinians to find each other and to make peace. In his words, peace requires the people of Israel and Palestine to recognize the human being in themselves and each other and to understand their interdependence. He advocated for the LGBTQI plus rights and decried all forms of violence and discrimination against this community. Speaking of hate crimes perpetrated against the LGBTQI plus community in a powerful video message marking 20 years since the World Conference on Human Rights, he said, I oppose such injustice with the same passion that I oppose apartheid. One of the causes that was dear to him and less well known to many of us was campaigning together with Her Royal Highness Mabel van Oranje, who is here with us today, against child marriage across the globe. I have learned how the Arch traveled to villages in Ethiopia, in India, and in Zambia to understand the circumstances under which young girls were being forced into marriage. He also took up this course with the elders. Mary Robinson, part of the elders, is here. Mama Grasha Marcel is also here. The group of senior leaders brought together by President Nelson Mandela in 2007. Such was his stamina, such was his commitment to social justice for all, that he took up the cudgels on behalf of millions of people around the world. Many would know his name, but many would not. But he did make a difference in taking up their causes. He never stopped fighting. He never stopped speaking out, and he never stopped caring. Since the passing of our beloved Arch, we've been looking back on his life, on the part he played in our transition to democracy, and to his towering role as the chairperson of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Today, 27 years after the advent of our democracy, we can still say with certainty that what we have achieved as a country was nothing short of a miracle. We could have chosen the path of retribution, but the project of national reconciliation 
of recognizing the injustices of our past set us apart from many societies in transition. Alongside President Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu helped to steer our nation through this very challenging and painful period. The heart-rending testimonies of many who had suffered and lost loved ones were broadcast for all to see. The accounts opened deep apartheid wounds, but they also opened a window not only for the formerly oppressed to know what had happened to their loved ones, but also to the white minority community to know what crimes had been committed and perpetrated in their name. Helping us to come to terms with the past was among the most arduous tasks of our new nation, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu played a seminal role in this whole process. At Madiba's request, he led the truth and reconciliation process with integrity, dignity, and humility. While our beloved Madiba was the father of our democracy, Archbishop Desmond Tutu was the spiritual father of our new nation. In considering how fortunate we are as a country to have been blessed with these two global icons, we think about Vilagazi Street in Soweto, the only street in the whole world that was home to two Nobel Peace Laureates. We think how both of these two icons of our country played different but complementary roles in forging the nation that we are today. Archbishop Desmond Tutu has been our moral compass, but he's also been our national conscience. Even after the advent of democracy, he did not hesitate to draw attention, often harshly, to our shortcomings as leaders of the democratic state. He saw our country as a rainbow nation emerging from the shadow of apartheid, united in its diversity, with freedom and equal rights for all. The arch bequeathed us many things. The importance of having the courage of one's convictions, solidarity with the oppressed, delivering on the promises made by the Constitution and many others. But it was with this term, Rainbow Nation, that he bequeathed our new nation the greatest gift of all, hope and forgiveness. Hope and forgiveness for a better tomorrow. Hope for a country free of tyranny and hope for a society where all the people of South Africa irrespective of their religious affiliation, their gender, their race, their origin, could live side by side in harmony. When he first spoke about us as a rainbow nation, South Africa was a different place and we were going through a very difficult time. We are still finding our feet on our long road to nationhood. He has left us at another difficult time in the life of our nation. Problems and challenges abound and they are everywhere. Poverty and inequality, racism, homophobia, gender-based violence, crime and corruption, have left many people disenchanted. 
There are times when he felt let down, and yet he never lost hope. The most fitting tribute we can pay to him, whoever and wherever we are, is to take up the cause of social justice for which he tirelessly campaigned throughout his life. Archbishop Dudu has left a formidable legacy, and we are enormously diminished by his passing. His life straddled an epoch in our country's history that has now come to an end. Though we say goodbye to him today with the heaviest of hearts, we salute our beloved Arch for all that he did to help build this nation. We thank him for giving us hope, for reminding us of our responsibility as a people, but more especially also as leaders, and for giving us a reason to believe that we are and that we can be a true rainbow nation that he spoke about. We celebrate him for what he was, life, Mpilo. To Mama Lea and the family, our nation shares in your sorrow. On behalf of the government and the people of South Africa, we thank you for sharing your husband, your father, your brother, uncle, and grandfather with us. We know it was not easy, and you, yet you did so willingly. He belonged to all of us, and it is all of us who mourn him, but today we celebrate his life. I recently came across these words which provide a fitting end to any tribute to Desmond Tutu. Tears are sometimes an inappropriate response to death. When a life has been lived completely honestly, completely successfully, or just completely, the correct response to death's perfect punctuation mark is a smile. His was a life lived honestly and completely. He has left the world a better place. And he has left our country a much better place than we were prior to our democracy. We remember him with a smile, the type of smile that he would have flushed around. And we say, Farewell, Father, servant of God. Zamaya kakhozo, hambagase, ulalengo tor. Rest in peace. Thank you. Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Rosani Mapchanya, to hand over the national flag to the Commander-in-Chief. Thereafter, the Commander-in-Chief will hand over the national flag to Mama Tutu. I thank you.
as we close this ceremonial, the arch was a great soul, a truly wonderful example of gift, grit, and gumption. We believe that beyond the absence, there is presence. Beyond the pain, there is healing. Beyond the brokenness, there is wholeness. Beyond the turmoil, there is peace. Beyond the hurting, there is heaven. Beyond the fighting, there is forgiveness. Beyond the silence, God speaks. Commander-in-Chief, permission to withdraw. I thank you. Thank you so much. I was told I shouldn't thank the president, but uh, thank you for your for your homily. Thank you so much. And lastly, to our preacher, uh, Bishop Michael, thank you so much. Let's give Bishop Michael a round of applause, please. Before the final blessing, uh, we will have a cremation service, which is a private uh, family cremation service uh, after uh, the service. And then at the time and date to, known to the family, we will come and inter the ashes of the arch uh, in the cathedral. And again, the internment service is a private service. Uh, once again, thank you to the city, thank you to the state, thank you to those, to the uh, IP Trust, uh, thank you to the Leah and Pilo Tutu uh, Foundation, thank you to the cathedral, and thank you to all those, you know yourself, that were in the Mpilo planning team for the last six years. On behalf of Mama Leah and the family, we want to say thank you. Masiriso Mama, please stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in you that which is well pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. With its multiple hallelujahs, may I just also recognize that our Archbishop has carried the lion load of an immense challenge that he has finally summited very gracefully with Solomonic wisdom and I think it would be so beautiful if he give him some love. <laughs> so I refer you to the liturgy that I hinted at, the hallelujah, it's, it's four syllables, not a sturdy English two one. So focus on that when we come to that. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Okay, are you going to go that way? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia! Alleluia!
we shall listen to behold our great high priest recorded by the cathedral choir.
Yeah.